Hit it. Let's get into it. One, two, three. Oh, and we are back and we are live. Welcome to my whiskey den tonight. We are going to be reviewing three of Driftless Glen's releases, one bourbon and two rise in our Monday shootout this evening to see who wins this evening's little event. Now, typically I ramble for quite a long time here at the beginning of the show, but we've already done this with Driftless Glen one other time. So we'll go quick. They are founded by Rene and Brian Bemis. They actually bought controlling interest from one other person a little after they started. Uh, they live in a really unique part of the state where the glaciers didn't go through. So they actually have peat bogs and a really great aquifer. They also have over 5,000 barrels aging in their warehouse at this moment, which is quite a bit for a little bit smaller distillery. And they have climbed the ranks in some of the, uh, I think it was... Five, uh, I was like a Fortune 500 um, company um, because of well, in the last couple of years they've become really well known. They've won some awards with some of their stuff, and they're getting pretty good distribution throughout the country. Like how we got this uh, from Sealbox. Am I correct, Mike? That's correct. Yes, they they usually have quite a few of their releases out there. I think there's probably five or six on their website now, and usually they do not disappoint. Um, so if you want to learn the rest of my typical spiel, oop, damn it, it's up over here above Mike's head. At least in the future it will be. <laughs> It'll be up over there. So happy to see everyone. Uh, oh, we got Ice House. Hey, how's it going? Arthur, it's always good to see you stop in. And uh, let's switch over Oh, to the first one we're going to review. It's going to be the Bourbon Barrel, number 614. This one comes in at 62.5% alcohol by volume. It's a 60 corn, 20 rye, 20 malted barley, four years and two months in a 25-gallon barrel. Now, that does change because I use 25s and 30s, I think, from the ones we're reviewing tonight. Uh, and I think they may even be moving up to some bigger barrels here in the future. So I... Who only got to talk for a couple minutes here, which is pretty odd. I'm going to kick it over to Ben or Mike to give it give a little nose on the first one. But uh, thanks for stopping in again, guys. I get heavy caramel, but it's it's the kind of caramel when you're actually cooking it, not just the caramel that's been cooked and opened. When it's starting to kind of bubble yeah. up and boil, starting to gas off. And yeah. Yeah, caramel. I'm getting, I mean, I'm curious because it's 60% corn, but man, I'm getting a lot of corn right off the nose up front. I'm getting a little mint actually too. That's just me um, in it. I, You know what? I, I I get that. That's But it's a tea with a mint. Yeah. I, I don't want to call it like a, well, kind of like black tea with like yeah. a little mint to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's nice. That's not bad on this one. No, and for being uh, 125 proof, it is, it's not bad on the nose getting it in there and trying to smell either. I would have guessed 47. Yeah. Yeah, not not very aggressive on the nose at all. No. little touch of licorice in there. I feel like that's – whatever their rye is, I think has a distinctive note of that anise black licorice in it. I, I'm going to find that out what, what it is because that always seems to pop up and it's it's stronger on the nose. It can be strong in the in the barrel when I when we've had them, but it's not it's not something I can't handle. Where there's a couple of them we've had where I had to put them down. You know, got to take a break. Yeah, the alcohol is not aggressive at all. No. Come on, thing. Sorry, I was trying to work the chat there so it would catch up. 
that mint is almost coming across a little bit uh, with a hint of blueberry to me. Blueberry has always got a little hint of uh, mint. Yeah, I can smell a little bit of that in there. Um, it's like a, it's part of that darker kind of hmm. almost like a darker fruit note in it. Right. But what I like about most of the stuff that they're releasing, it's all like over four years for most of the stuff they're putting out there. Most of the stuff you're not seeing from them is a two year. And the one I originally liked from them that like really put me on the map to them was their young rye. That was only like 18 months. And I thought that was pretty fantastic. So it's neat to see them get stuff out to like the, the four and almost five year range with things. Okay. Oh, Ed in the chat. Oh, hey, Ed. Yeah. How's it going? It's good to see you. Are, you. are you stuck at work right now? And Ice House said he just ordered a bottle of the single barrel from mm. the steel box. Mm. Okay. I am getting... It's... Yeah, the rye is... is whatever they use for rye is a strong rye. Like that black licorice note comes through for me on the bourbon and obviously the rise as well too. At least it's uh, a little bit different. I'm getting like a dusty note on it as well too. Yep. Yeah. Dusty grain. Um, mm -hmm. Dusty pepper. I tell you what, if you handed me this glass and just said, here's your good rye, I would never question you otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a good numb to it on the tongue. But it's not overpowering with the alcohol, but yeah, it does no. kind of numb it up a bit. Mm -hmm. You like a little lidocaine feel. <laughs> it just soft, softens up the palate for the rest of it. <laughs> oh, Ed, you have the evenings off all this week? That's crazy. Like, good for you. You've been busting ass lately, so. I get a green apple hidden in there. Not with the, no blueberry, like on the nose. But a green apple, like a dusty, dusty barn and pepper spice. There's some, I get like a little bit of almost a cinnamon bread or cinnamon toast. Yep. Yeah. And uh, licorice comes in a little bit on the back end and that, you just a lot of cracked pepper. Yeah. Yeah. Almost feel like I've been into a peppercorn. <laughs> that little cinnamon, I'm getting more on the on the finish. Like after I drink, I'm getting more of that little bit of a cinnamon uptake afterwards. Hmm. And the car I get like a little bit of caramel right off the bat. Front end front end of the tongue. With that, with the corn note, but then it really, that, like you said, that cracked pepper just kind of rushes in pretty quick after that. Yeah. I, what was that? It's malted barley. Yeah, just the, their rye is so strong. Yeah. But once again, the tongue, even though like I, I gave it said like a lidocaine kind of note to it, um, <laughs> it wasn't really alcoholy. It just was like numbing on the tongue. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's not. A, yeah, not like drinking something normally that you know what sixty two and a half percent. It's it's just it's there's there's not the burn. It's just in in the lasting burn to it. It is just like a, a numbing effect. It's nice. You feel a little bit of the burn, but you you don't feel like you know like you're gonna choke. No. Yeah. No, I'm. I don't know. Thirty seconds, forty five seconds after a swallow, I I start to get a little bit of a slow building warmth coming up out of the chest. Like it's not a burn. Just get this building warmth rising up. Yeah. But the, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like lidocaine in the mouth. I mean, you just get that numbing down the side of the cheeks and side mm -hmm. of the tongue. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. You know, you know, you just had a, a, a nice strong bourbon. <laughs> but I am, I am just surprised so much the corn's not there. Yeah. And oh, did, I know you might not have been. Did you did you get to try any of the border bourbon 
for that we did last week when you weren't available. I haven't yet. I'm, I'm okay. going to try to hit those this week and see what. Okay. We'll, we'll let you do your own review or your own thoughts on that. We just, when Mike and I had it, the border was weird because on the bourbon, it, it landed on the front <laughs> two thirds of the tongue and like just skipped the back third, like the finish, everything was just like gone on the backside, but it stayed on like the front two thirds. So it was completely weird. I, yeah, I watched, I watched you guys. I saw that. So I'm curious to see uh, see that effect. I mean, we had a weird one the other night with Eli. Uh, he has an Eagle Rare uh, that we sampled, and it was just funky in the way you got a quick hit of caramel, which I'm not used to getting that much caramel in Eagle Rare, and then this little touch of uh, kind of medicinal cherry, and then it just drops straight off the cliff. And then you're sitting there going, where did this thing go? And then, you know, 20 seconds later, a little bit of barrel spice comes up on the finish and just does this weird roller coaster thing. See, and that's like a, that's a weird blend because it probably wasn't a single barrel like uh, like they yeah. usually are with Eagle Rare. I mean, that's usually right. a nice mix. So that's a little odd flavor profile for them. Interesting. Yeah, it's got some single barrel picks coming over at Ray's. Um, that should be fun to go through. Do you, and he's he loves he likes rye, so I don't see that going yeah. wrong for him. Hmm. Yeah, no, this this would be a bourbon right up your alley, Ed. I mean, there's a strong yeah. rye presence in there. And Eli thought he hated Eagle Rare for quite a while. That's <laughs> <laughs> I had someone that uh did the Eagle Rare and the Buffalo Trace and then thought like the Eagle Rare was spicier. Now and, and that's like complete opposite for me. I think BT is usually like a little more spice note, a little more heat, no matter what the the ABV on them. And I usually think that Eagle Rare is like the little bit, sm the smoother brother to it. Yeah. And I was just surprised that someone else is like completely flip flopped on that. I was like, I, I think you got, I think you poured them blind wrong. You know, like <laughs> I think you got them backwards. I really do. That's just not, it's not the way they work out. But yeah, after you mentioned yours, I'm like, that's odd. Very, yeah. very odd. So I just tried a couple drops of water and uh, <laughs> somebody's got to do it. Uh, it. It really on the, on the nose, it, it, it knocked the black pepper and the dustiness down on it. The, in uh, on the, the palate as well, it, it, the, the spice was muted and the, oh. the corn and the, and the rye came out. On the nose, I get more of a, like a eucalyptus now. Yeah. I added about four drops. Yeah, the rye really tamed down. Caramel and almost like a buttered caramel that kind of mixed to it. Hmm. Oh, definitely not as challenging. And I find this to be a much more approachable. Yeah. Like, but almost, I'm not, almost dangerous. Yeah, but I'm not getting enough barrel note. Like I am at the end in the finish, but yeah. overall, just a couple drops really took yeah. the wind out of it. So let me ask you this: after 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 digging in this one for a little bit, I just added some water and going through it. This one, it just really comes across. The overall impression is it's dense. The flavors roll through quick and. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, obviously it's, there's quite a bit of oil to it. Um, it's, it's fairly oily, but it just feels like a really dense bourbon. Like you're really going to have to dig to pull any more notes beyond just the basic of what you're getting. Yeah, yeah I'm just wondering, you, you know, this one needs to spend a good 30, 45 minutes in the glass, which really it already has for me because I poured this maybe 30 minutes before we went on air here. Um, but No, I'd say you're getting about time. – four notes, four to maybe five notes, pretty strong. Yeah. And then the rest of them, like you said, you're kind of hunting after that for some of them, kind of digging in that way. So, yeah. yeah. And then, like I said, the couple drops just kind of lightened it up and made it much, I wouldn't say it changed between the four or five notes in it. Right. Um, those are still the same things I'm getting. I'm not getting a whole lot else other than the eucalyptus on the nose, but it's still kind of tight and compact flavors, not not a mass variety. Right. Yeah. yeah, it just it rolls from the the front to the back 
just really quick for me. I mean, just boom, it's gone. And uh, you're into the finish, basically. And it's just all that pepper and spice. It's yeah. it's the pepper that jumped up, the, the black pepper. Yeah. Note. Like, like I said, for only 20% rye, that seemed pretty dominating through, of the bourbon. Yeah. Which has me kind of concerned because we, we did the smell test before here. And I kind of did them in, like, increasing order of the black licorice smell. So the next one is going to be the 161, and the other one's going to be the barrel 265, I think it is. Yeah. And the 265 might be a, a bit strong for me at that point. So, but let's switch over to the, oh, not the 265. Let's so we'll switch that. 161. There, we'll change that. 161. This one's only 60% alcohol by volume, 75 rye, 25 malted barley. And almost four, almost five years in the barrel, and a twenty-five gallon barrel as well too on this one. But four years, nine months, so a little bit longer than uh, than the other one. That's a lot of time for these small barrels, and uh, yeah, you know. yeah. But like I was saying, some of the other places around here, even in some small barrels, they'll do two years, and it seems greeny. Yeah to it and then maybe that could you know like we have the talk could be the barrels on something like that where it seems like they weren't air dried or air dried enough but uh some of the some of the younger ones not necessarily in a rye but in a bourbon you'll get that green note hidden in there no this is i mean i was going to say it's it's actually it's it's really nice i mean it doesn't feel over oak in any way um the bourbon and at least this rye coming off the nose no now I, th I think this one almost smells a little gentler on the nose than the bourbon did. Yeah, it smells sweeter, like a, a little bit of a, oh, a good a good spicy tea. Once, some cinnamon. Yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna say it's not a mint, but it is more of a cinnamon in this one. Yeah. Once again, at sixty percent, I'm kind of huffing this, so not. Yeah. It's <laughs> Not you heavy. You wouldn't normally do that. You know, it's just shove your face way in there. That's. But it's that part, the, the alcohol part does not seem to be like a factor in most of their stuff that they're doing. So that's, that's nice. Yeah. A little bit of a dark chocolate note in there too. Yep. It's a little bit of a bite to the chocolate. And I'm getting barrel note on the, on the back, on the back end of it. I'm curious with the with Wisconsin because you, their their seasons, but it's not like it's you know predictable. I mean, you can joke about six months of winter, but if they, when when they're putting it in the barrel, if they think about that, it's like all right, oh no, we're doing these rise, we're not gonna we're not gonna do a lot of rise until these months because weather is gonna kind of do this. But considering you know it could be seventy tomorrow <laughs> for for five days and then go to you know minus ten for two weeks, it's kind of hard to predict. Sure, we don't we don't get that much. Usually, if say say if we're in uh, like the other day we were at minus nine, we probably won't break thirty. I mean, at this time of year, maybe like a forty degree swing in a couple days. One time it was there was one day that it was fifty, but usually in winter it's. It stays in a ballpark of maybe 20, 30 degrees in a day. Not, not a huge, huge thing, but like you're right, like it, that could be an important time of barreling. Like we barrel everything in the spring right away, you know, rather than, you know, sit on it for a bit, rather than barrel like all throughout the year. Maybe you barrel certain things at a certain time of the year. And I'm getting eucalyptus on this one as well, too. There's black licorice. I'm always going to smell that on this. And their rise, I think. But a little more sugary than I expected. Yeah. But nowhere near Caval rye sugar. <laughs> I was the sweet that was the sweetest rye I have ever had in my life. And like it wasn't bad, but like it was a it was a one drink thing. You know. Right. Like after that it got a little out of hand. Yeah. I was ready to see Wilford Brimley come up and give us the public service <laughs> message. <laughs> <laughs> and what's everyone in the chat drinking tonight what are you guys sipping on while you're out in uh 
out enjoying yourselves. And I'm curious if you're kind of taking it easy this week, having the evenings off, or are you guys trying to push in a lot of video production, or what's your plans? Might just be resting up for Distill America, <laughs> which is which isn't a bad idea. Some heavy lifting that day, huh? <laughs> hmm. I'm getting like a little. Oh wow! Almost like a medicinal note on this. Just like for a second, a look. Weird. That's. Hmm. Yeah, it's like mint cough drops. Or a men, or menthol. Mm hmm. Man, I don't know how it's, much of it's the rice spice or the proof that comes out in the palate. But. Yeah, I was going to say this one is more aggressive, definitely, on the palate compared to the last one. Yeah. yeah. It's coming at you. Um, and the pet it's ooh, i almost want to say it, it tastes like more barrel compared to the the other one had more like this one has pepper too but not like black pepper this might be like a white pepper yeah white pepper um there's some honey on the back end but it's like a yep. honey and eucalyptus mm -hmm. uh, like a yeah i'm thinking of like a a cough dropper a throat lozenge kind of thing honey eucalyptus yeah. mm-hmm Good for cold and flu season. Yeah, here's your here's your ideal hot toddy. <laughs> and almost that's like, a really good idea. I might have to do that. Uh, no, you're saying that. And right before you did, I was almost getting like I was getting like almost like a little bit of a cherry cough drop. Yeah, that had that in there because I was getting a little bit of like a dark a dark cherry. Yeah, it's a medicinal candy. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of black tea in there too. Yeah. And it's so strong, like the black anise kind of flavor is there for a second, but then like almost the heat from the barrel and stuff kind of take over for it and it fades away. That's I guess that's what I like about their rise is that what is there for black licorice or anise does not it may stick around, but it is not powerful. No. Like it hits for a second and then other things happen. Oh, it, it, has that been what you found? Because I've only had single barrels of Driftless Glen. Has that been what you found with the other Driftless Glens also? I'll have to get a different bottle just because like a lot of the, well, I had a couple of them beforehand. And yeah, I, I never really found the eucalyptus or anise note to be overly aggressive in them. Like it's there, but it's tameable or it gets overwhelmed by something else. Oh, and Eli, you son of a gun. Red breast mm -hmm. cast strength, that is, you, you got to work that one down if that's the one you're working mm -hmm. on. There's nothing wrong with taking out a, taking out something like that. Before Especially it disappears, though, have you done the red breast 12 cast strength with, uh, mixed with Ardbeg? That's, a, that's an amazing blend right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it is. I can't remember. I think it might have been cast strength that did that. And mm -hmm. we had to do it. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, that is very tasty. Yeah. As much as you think cast strength by its the red breast cast strength by itself is kind of uh, standalone, punching above its weight, that really changes changes the world on it. Yeah. This the nose is nowhere near as powerful as the drink on this. That's deceptive. Right. Like the note. I'm not getting the, the usual hit of mahogany wood that I typically get out of these Midwestern ryes. I don't know if it's the proof and the barrel just kind of overpowering it to a degree, but I get a little hit of lemon oil on the front and I can feel that go all the way to the back with everything. But the what I usually get that mahogany wood that I, to me is like signature for Midwestern ryes, I'm not getting that in this. Hmm. Oh, I don't remember the ratio. Could even be like a few, oh, 50 50. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. Or, or, you know, or, or 
do a 90 10 and then do an 80 20 and then a 70 30 and 60 I'm gonna say and just just keep going down the line i'm gonna say about five six drops and all of a sudden i think there'd be a pretty substantial jump in it well of course for science that makes yeah. it better all, all the radio. mike went all johnny five on us there for a second <laughs> <laughs> um, I put a couple drops in this one, and wow, what, like the nose flattens out again. Yeah, sweeter on the nose, like the like there's almost like more of a sugar coming through with a couple drops. The tea note is much stronger yeah. with a couple drops. Me, it turns more to like a black tea on the nose. Eucalyptus brown sugar. Almost more like a molasses on the nose now. I got a little bit of, uh, yeah, some molasses on the probably about the first sip or two. And then it just turned into lemon oil and medicinal and uh, just pepper and, and barrel. The, the lemon oil comes out more after a couple of drops. Like that sticks around, not just like on the first like little titch of it. it Pulls yeah. through midway through with a couple drops there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely black tea on the nose. Yeah, and in the actual taste too. This is yeah, this is getting where before it wasn't. This is getting like that little numbing effect on the two sides, mm -hmm. on the outsides of my mouth now. But yeah. not, but I'm not getting the pepper punch from it. <laughs> mm. Like it's there, but the pepper pops up and fades real quick. Sticks around on the on the palate on the finish, but it's not. It's not strong or overwhelming like when it was full when it was full strength. That the first like it was almost it was a little overwhelming flavor wise. Who excuse me? Hmm. I think I like this one a little bit more with the water added to it. Yep. Yeah. I think quite a bit more for me. Yeah. Yeah, it went from a it just went from being a strong whiskey to this, this is very nice i like that and the car the caramel note comes out much it's low but it comes out more pronounced with a couple of drops of water in it so yeah i think i might lean towards that one with a couple of drops right now as being as being my lead but not if i was going right out cast strength i think i'm leaning more towards the bourbon right now Oh, Jim's drinking the 51 rye. Maybe you can tell. What notes are you getting on that one? That's one that uh, that I have to get. I think that's the one they used to replace the young rye was the 51 rye. Oof. Oh. oh, sorry. I, I was jumping over to the next one. I got I got excited. Actually, my <laughs> my level started to get low. So I just started to transition a little bit into the 265. Sure. <laughs> and the 265 is 60%. So that's the same uh, ABV as the other rye barrel. Same mash bill. Four years and eight months, so one month less. Yeah. But in a 30-gallon barrel instead of a 25-gallon barrel. So a little bit bigger on it. Um, just give myself a second here. Whoa. Now, I'm sure, like, when we started out, like, I thought this one was the most, like, black licorice. This one right now smells like sweet brown sugar to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it reminds me of Big League Chew. First first whiff, it's like that dusty Big League Chew. And then the, yeah, then the tea. Yeah. It's weird. Order order is such a weird thing in a tasting I mean, yeah that can, that can just that can destroy like your whole image of an evening and come back to it another night and do it in a, 
a different order and see what you think because right now, just off the nose, this this one this smells more like a bourbon to me. It's like compared to the other two, I'm getting more of the rich sugars, eucalyptus, but not the not the licorice. A little bit of like a menthol-y note. A little dark chocolate. Yeah, I, I gotta lean more towards this one. I'm I, at least on the nose right now. I'm gonna be honest. Coming off the last two, I'm having a hard time pulling much off the nose. I'm getting a little bit of a buttered uh, maple syrup note, a little bit of sugar, you know, brown sugar, but it just feels really restrained and dense compared to to the last two. I don't know. <laughs> My nose. My nose is blown. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Well, this is the third one that, like I said, we, it's not like it's on uh, some 40s and stuff. We are we are huffing 60s, and then we are yeah. inhaling pretty good on them. Maybe we're getting the, the nose drunk. Time to, oh. time to break out the silver spray paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no need to go to jail. Just put your face in the glass and put a hood over your head. <laughs> Oh, Eli's mentioned that uh, that combo red breast art bag at 8020 smells like a school eraser. <laughs> now my question is that just like when it's normal or after you've rubbed it really good to get like that heat that heat smell yeah. going when you rub a school eraser. <laughs> which way is that? I'm guessing the got rubbed really hot. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this one, I'm really, I'm kind of curious to grab the the Koval Rye and smell smell that with this because this is this is sweet. So, so the thirty gallon barrel might have been given over to the sugar sugar flavors. I haven't gotten into the taste, but yeah, this is sweet on the palate, and it's the the licorice to me is the the anise is just yeah. right up front, right? It's right there off the bat. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm hesitant. Hold on. Oh. Mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. Whoa. Maybe I opened my mouth too quick there. Because I opened it and it was like the rush of heat and alcohol went through. But yes, black licorice up front. Right away, I did get like sweet caramel. Yeah. For on like the front third of my tongue. Yeah. Then it kind of. Wow. I got orange peel too with that. <sighs> Hold on. You got to. That's funny to say that. maybe power suggestion, but I'm getting, yeah, like orange on the nerve <laughs> right now. I got to flush my system. Hold on a second. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Orange and black tea, orange yeah. oil. When you hey. said like orange oil, I was almost, I agree, almost to the extent where it's like that, uh, oh God, where are those oils my wife uses? Essential oils. Like it was like a drop of orange essential oil. And not like the rind or anything, but like poof, something like that. Where it, I don't know. It is the pepper note is. I had to be wrong because I think the bourbon had the pepperiest note of all of them. Yeah, yeah. There's. So this is black tea and black liquor is strong for me. Yeah, there's a there's a faint hit of pepper on the on the finish on this, but it's nothing like the previous two. No. This is way more candy sweetness above the. Yeah. Way, I mean, you would think the bourbon would be sweeter, but. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put water in this right away because, yeah, I'm. That stuff is so strong for me. It's. This one's going to unfortunately be the loser right now. This one's getting shot by both of them on accident. <laughs> 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 You're afraid of the anise. And the Mexicans, you know, standoff. Like, this one dude got shot by both the other guys, and the other two lived. This is the guy that's getting shot. <laughs> and what were we 
we joking about on Facebook today? <laughs> the bad and the ugly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually into those on this one probably more than the other two. It's starting to finally open up for me. Well, that's just weird because I like the nose on this. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm almost getting – it's not Robitussin, but it's like a cough droppy – menthol note in it along with the eucalyptus and it's not he as heavy on the black tea. I think it's sweeter with the water. Mm-hmm. A little bit more of the caramel note. Then you get heat. No. Nope. You are not you're not my winner. You get feel free to vote your own personal way on this because I, I wanted you to come up everyone to come up with their own but uh 265 was not my winner. Is this coming up a little bit more tannic for you guys? I mean, I'm, I'm really like mm -hmm. very yep. stringent on the sides of the mouth. Of the mouth yep. here. Almost on like that. It rolled to like at the front part of my lip too. Instead of just being <laughs> on my tongue, yeah. it like rolled up in there. No. I'm going to go back to the other two and come up with who might, who might the grand winner be for me. Poor guy who doesn't get shot. I did do the dumb class again, too, by the way. Mm, I'm not. That last one got me. I'm not. <laughs> I hadn't been. I'm like, I could make one, but right now I'm not. I'm not going to make one. That's uh, I'm down to two. We'll keep it this way. And I was right, it is the heat smell Eli's talking about. Because that's... What else would you expect from a little bit of art bag added to something? Huh. Hmm. All right. I'm running back to the bourbon for a second. Mike, you look like you are totally meditating or just fell asleep. No, the, this, uh, the blend. Yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting. It's not that it, there's no pepper. There's no, there's no rye burn. Wow. That is odd. I was there's, expecting that, that, uh, it's, it's really interesting to take over really. Mm-hmm. Me too. Mm. The licorice does come out a little bit, but it's not. It's weird because it, it comes it comes back with um it, it coats the pal palate a little bit and then it comes back with the burn like it's slow mm. feel the burn mm -hmm. <laughs> all right Penicillin for that, Mike. i'd recommend it <laughs> i'm still voting no that other one just had too much for me but uh you guys going back tasting the other two i think i'm, I'm narrowing yeah. down my selection on this right now I went back to the bourbon. I think I've got my winners, or I think I've got them ordered how I like them. It's probably honestly different from you guys. But. Yeah, the black licorice is so much different between the two rise. Like one is way, for me, one is way more aggressive and one is tame. That's just, and this thing's all like cracked pepper and craziness. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the blend is interesting. I get a little bit of the corn from the bourbon up front. Yeah. And then it starts to hit kind of a sweet licorice note. And it is nowhere near as peppery spice, you know, the pepper spice of the first two. That, that really tamped down a lot. But I'm getting some of the astringency from that, uh, 
from that 265 barrel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of, that that barrel, I don't want to say overpowers, but it, it, there's a little bit of domination of, uh, over the other two. You can tell that that one was added. Knowing, knowing the three whiskeys, you can yeah. tell, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's got that one in it. Hmm. All right. You want to start first, Ben? It sounds like you got your you got your three laid out. Yeah, I've got it down. Um, interesting for me. Uh, okay, I'll go in reverse order. My number three was the barrel 161 rye. Okay. Um, my number two is the bourbon. And my number one is the 265, that last one we just did. Um, to me, the other two, the pepper just overpowered everything for the most part. Um, the pepper spice, and uh, they rolled through pretty quick. Uh, I really enjoyed the notes I got off the 265, even the licorice up front. And my taste in wine is really big and powerful, and I love a really strong tannic structure in wine, like a good Bordeaux um, or even a California cab that's, you know, you want to put in the cellar for five, 10 years. I, I, I love that strong, uh, I love the strong tannins. And so the astringency that comes across in that last ride, the 265, I like that. Um, I like the nose off of that one the best. Um, I got, once it finally opened up for me, the notes I got off of it, I enjoyed the most. So yeah, that's, that's my ranking. Mike, you want to go next? Yeah, I've got. Um, yeah, my third one is the is the bourbon just just for that pepper alone. Compared to the other two, that pepper, I didn't it wasn't really a turn off, but it it didn't strike me the way the other two did. And then the uh, the it's one heat that's overpowering. I just took another drink of it. Like the yeah. pepper is like a that's a tax you. And and it's and the, not in a bad way. Like no, and it's the way that it hangs there. That that's the thing about it. It'd be different if you had this nice. Or just it didn't leave, but just like here I am. See you later. I just feel like it needs to go with a steak. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah. Then one one sixty one. Uh, pretty close though between one sixty one and the and the barrel two sixty five. But the two sixty five, I think it's just it's a lot more fun overall. Um, and and I I am going to make a hot toddy tonight, and I'm going to put this in there and see what that's like. <laughs> Because I, because I got a feeling it would that in a hot toddy, uh, hot toddy recipe I use is my grandma's, which is water, whiskey, and sugar to taste, <laughs> and, and I think I can cut down on the sugar substantially with this one. That's not bad. That's, well, that's probably true too. It was had a, had enough sweetness to it. Yeah. Um, and I get what you were saying, Ben, about the tannic note and like uh, the barrel structure in two sixty five, but. That was just too much, too much black licorice for Pat. <laughs> yeah. it, that was too much for me. Like I get it, I understand it, I respect it, but it is not not where I would go. Yeah. Um, so that one's gonna be that's that's gonna be number three for me, and then like the the bourbon one, just like I, it's so much. Pe it's just like the pepper part. Like I just went back to it. It was enough to be like. Poof, like it's like wham to the senses for a second, and I kind of dig that. But uh, son of a bitch, mm. the depth of flavor in the in the one sixty one rye is what I think is is more intriguing. So I think I would go 265 rye, two licorice for me. And if I'm going just by my flavor profile, I think I would go the other rye and then my bourbon as the bourbon is the winner. But like actual like legitimate like amount of flavors coming out of it, the rye has more stuff going on. Like there's more, there's more levels to that happening. Right. Um, and with the water, it was, it was the 161 rye barrel. When I added water, a couple drops, that was my favorite of the whole evening. 
like those couple of drops loosened up the black licorice note for me on that one and then i was still getting all the depth of character of that one so in reality i'm gonna let the 161 rye win for me bourbon two and then the poor 265 is going to a friend because that's just too much for me so i gotta i gotta i'm gonna i'm gonna let the rye win on this one just because it does it's got a lot it's got more going on and i'm but like i said like the bourbon i think mixed with uh maybe elk or a steak would be really neat with that kind of pepper kick that it has in it where it's like wham i'm like and i think that would actually work out pretty well with that yeah the the bourbon for me was a little too dense in a negative mm -hmm. way and i just i feel like i could not cut through to really pull enough enough flavors enough complexity out of it it just was uh a really dense is all i can think of describing i mean you just couldn't really get it i'm like you're saying that now i'm getting like dense like it's a it's a caramel a little bit of butter um but the pepper notes are really like almost like a black and a white pepper like just mm -hmm. kind of fight their way in there to kind of put their stamp on everything but but yeah like i said we'll I'll let the the median rye, the one sixty one win. Is that who you guys had winning? You guys had the two sixty five, didn't you? Two sixty five, yeah. 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 So let's so let me ask you if you if you like if we were sitting here tonight and we only had the bourbon, mm -hmm. not comparing it to the two ryes, how do you think that you would vote? Well, not really. You should say vote, but how do you think you'd feel about the bourbon? <sighs> I think that I think I could handle it because I don't know. I, I'm more bourbon before I am rye and my whole structure of tasting. Yeah. I feel like, like I said, sometimes I feel like I'm on barstool sports. I'm trying to explain how I like pizza. Like I like the thin crust, not the thick crust, but I respect this. But if this is, this is where I, this is my home, this is my home turf, which is more kind of bourbon than it is rye. I think I would be, Okay, I think I would be able. I think I would like that one. I do. I do like it. Um, but like I said, it would. It'd be almost like a pairing one for me overall. Even like it is now, the way I'm seeing it, is like it's something that I would say would be, need to be paired with something interesting. Oh yeah, sorry. We're we're tossing around different barrel numbers, Oscar. Sorry about that. We're just trying to, trying to pick which one is is the best. There was one bourbon. Which was the six fourteen, and then there was uh, two different ryes, one sixty one and two sixty five, and I picked the one sixty one, and Mike and Ben both picked the two sixty five, and I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. two sixty five, two sixty six, whatever it takes. Mm. I think the bourbon for me, Mike. You're asking. I like the challenge of the the peppery spice coming on the back end i mean that that's challenging in a really good way and i, I like to be challenged by a whiskey i mean i, I want something to kind of grab me by the shirt collar and say hey pay attention to me you know but um to me the, the one thing that yeah you know, hit on again the one thing that detracts that knocks some points off for me is just again how dense it is you feel like there's more to it but you just can't get to it you can't get past the initial three or four notes that you hit um and it just it leaves something wanting for me in that so um enjoyable yeah yeah i could i could sit down and enjoy a glass of this i like i like the challenge of that of that the pepperiness of it but um yeah, like you said you're all you're looking for something else and it doesn't seem to show up right like in spades like sometimes like like you said thir 20 30 minutes from after leaving it out all of a sudden like you might be able to pick up one or two more notes I think that's the pepper is so overpowering. I think that's 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 the note, and it's it's just an, it's not a pepper isn't always a dominating note in just a bourbon. So that's what I think I find interesting. Right. And one thing for me with it with this bourbon, um, and I mean this bottle substantially more depleted than the others, um, was the first first pour of it. Uh, like if I sat down with it and I had just the first pour, 
didn't really, it didn't strike me as anything fantastic. But what I found was when I did a small pour, had it, went back and had another pour of it, my opinion changed just because I'd already gotten it kind of I mean, like you, you've cut through, you know, maybe that richness or that density and it's things start to open up a little bit. Uh, and, and I, I, I found that pretty, pretty interesting. It, it it's a, it's a different bourbon. And, and I, I understand these are, this is a single barrel. So this is not indicative of the overall driftless Glen bourbon. This is one barrel that was, uh, I don't even know how many bottles that they had for this one, but um, it's one, you know, it's one barrel. It's going to have one character or some characteristics to it, but it is completely different. But it is, it, it takes the second pour for me to really sit down and say, okay, I, I, it's like I, the first one is I like it. And then the second one is I'm enjoying this. It, it's just, it's different. It's kind of, it, it's almost a challenge. You know, it's like, I'm going to do this because I know this has been a challenge every single time and I know what I have to do. It's awesome. Oh, I see Mark. Mark is still in Canada. Is here. Yeah. Oh, I stepped in. Nice to see you, Mark. He just, uh, I think this week they just opened up everything like full bore. Like stop in and see him. And well, I think five uh, five things are being released there that they have to taste and try out. And they're like fully open, open, which is awesome for you guys. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Congratulations, you guys. Hope it really goes well. Oh. Yeah. Jim Lehman says he's going to be at Distill America with at Ice House. So oh, nice. Hopefully you guys will run into him there. Yeah, that'd be That's cool. That's just what I was trying to put together, but I'm a one of the type. But whatever, yeah. You guys get a hold of me on the Facebook page or just me in general. Look me up. We'll uh, try to hook yeah. up with you there when we're there because that's uh, absolutely. It's a fun fun time. Did you guys get? Uh, the VIP pass or just like the normal pass to get in? Um, I think one starts at four and the other one starts at five, but, uh, but either way, yeah, that's, I mean, we're hoping, I think Sherry and J Sean and I are hoping to get down there about noon, maybe a little bit after, maybe do a bigger lunch or a lunch and then eat again a little bit later, <laughs> like a snack Yeah. before it starts. Cause that'll be, uh, it'll be something pretty sweet. Yeah. But we are running. Kind of close. Uh, where the hell is the timer? It's gone. I don't care. Yeah. But I know when I look, whenever I found it on the screen, it's getting close to an hour. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna run, we don't want to run over into uh, Whiskey Crusaders time or anything like that. It's the only thing from them. But uh, what we was gonna bring up is we don't have a date picked out, but we are going to be doing a hundred subscriber stream stream because we just kind of broke that recently. And on that, uh, at least one of the things we're going to do, uh, we're going to take all the names, or I'm going to take all the names off the Facebook and like the YouTube page, kind of filter them down into one list. We're going to spin the wheel and see, uh, see where it lands at least three different times. And then I'll be sending someone some samples. Ben will be sending some samples to somebody and Mike will be sending some samples to somebody. So stop in. Hopefully you're one of the people that wins and, you know, get a, get a free batch of stuff to try see what you think about it maybe we'll have you on to see what you think about some of the things that we've been we've been trying out um but yeah we just don't have a date down for that yet we'll be we're looking into that to make it a, a nice evening maybe we'll have some guests on as well too throughout it but uh with distill america coming up i wanted to kind of let that be the centerpiece and kind of keep my mind open for that as it goes through um but yeah so i think we're gonna call it quits for the evening um sure. probably see you right. next monday next tuesday but uh then we're getting into we're gonna break off of the midwest thing for a little bit because i kind of pushed that before distill america wanted to get a couple different wisconsin midwest distilleries in before that happened just for people that were going there kind of give you an idea if you see them you know what to try and if you do go, I know a few spirits is going to be there, and they just won uh, one of the best whiskeys of the world recently. Um, they were on the list for one of them. I know they're going to be there. They have some really nice stuff as well, too. So there's a bunch of stuff great to try there. Um, shit, there goes my rambling. Off in well, weird speaking, of, speaking of best whiskeys in the world, mm -hmm. our, our ginger overlords at uh, Iron Root won what best bourbon in the world this week. Yeah. yeah. 
and March 9th is March when 9th. Robert's coming on. Um, we're working on bringing on Josh and Gretchen. And yeah, like you said, the Ginger Overlords, the last two years, they are being extremely dominant in World Whiskey Awards. That, uh, yeah, it's pretty damn impressive. I just, I just want to say that. Yeah, very well deserved. Well, well ho hopefully we're planning a trip down there at some point this yeah. year. At least some of us are uh, are working our way down there, and uh, we'll get maybe get some footage and some other stuff like that. But uh, we'll, yeah. we'll at least be tasting everything, <laughs> and that will happen the same week uh, of March 9th, maybe the week before, or week after. Um, we'll be dropping reviews of different iron root stuff. So maybe we'll have one night where we have two or three on, but uh, we finally upgraded the StreamYard stuff so that we don't have to have the StreamYard logo up in the corner. We now have the My Whiskey Den logo up in the corner. And then we can start just drop. We can record the videos with the three of us. And we will just put out reviews through the week, and we won't have to have necessarily a live stream every time for everybody. Not that we don't love you. We like you stopping in and showing showing up for us. But, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think we should call tonight, and we'll see everyone next week. Probably Monday is what I'm thinking. Maybe we'll give our little thoughts of uh, Distill America for a little bit, but we'll, yeah. we'll taste some. We're going to have to have a scotch night, too. Um, that's coming up. We we, yeah. we we've sent each other some nice stuff, and it's sitting in the bottle way too long. <laughs> uh, there's a couple there that have to be cracked open for fun purposes. So uh, everyone, again, thanks for stopping in. Remember, it's not the size of the den that matters; it's the love of the whiskey. Hold on, I need to get one. I don't want it to be that 265. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, folks. Thanks everybody for stopping in. Let's get into it. One, two, three.